Next fight coming up on our card. This is straight up weird. I mean, we have Chase Hooper. What is he, the dream? He used to be the teenage dream. Does he listen to Katy Perry? I don't know. Do I listen to Katy Perry? Sometimes. Sometimes when I'm alone in the car. But when I look at this one, it's Chase Hooper against Steven Peterson. Now, Steven Peterson, Matt, if people are unaware... This guy competed at LFA1. Didn't just compete at LFA1. He competed against then future Bellator title challenger, Leandro Higo. And he lost. And now he's 4-5 and five since then. And he ended up in the UFC, came in on Contender Series. And listen, it was Contender Series Season 1. Did he win? No. He lost a split to Benito Lopez. But then he gets a win over an LFA. And then he gets a call on short notice. He gets to fight Brandon Davis. He loses. He beats Matt Bissette by split. Bellator zone. Loses to Luis Pena, loses to Bruce Leroy, Alex Caceres, beats Martin Bravo, knocked him out. Tough Latin America season three winner. How impressive is that? Now, the thing is, he's been off for almost two years, so I had to do a little bit of a deep dive. And I'm going to read you a little bit of a quote because you need to get some of this background info. Now, I'm not going tinfoil hat. I'm not going like I did with John McDessie, but the interviewer is the same. It was a James Lynch interview from Odds Checker U.S., and he said, I had to withdraw out of fights in 2020 and 2021 due to left elbow issue. It was a nagging issue. There were some bone chips in there. I had to get that one cleaned up. They realized that the bone chips were causing issues with the ligaments. Got to get that fixed. So, all right, that's fair. It was a four to five month recovery time. He was able to get back into the gym, get training. Then he got COVID around Christmas. All right. Well, that set him off or set him Never away for a Never a good while. time to get COVID, but that's even worse. Said the whole family got it. Ooh. You hate to hear it. Then he got hurt, and he said, and I quote, minor tear in something, I'm not going to mention what or where. I don't love that, but he did say he's 100% now, he's been training fully, and so Stephen Ocho Peterson and the guys at Fortis MMA trying to get a game plan together against Chase Hooper, who coincidentally has been training in the Carolinas with the Thompsons, Senior and Steven. So interesting to see that Chase Hooper making the move over, trying to work his striking. You know he's trained with uh, who, Ryan Hall in the past to work his ground game and striking, but Chase Hooper trying to make those improvements. The guy's still young. He's under 22, and now he's got a fight against, I'm not going to use the word jobber, but a guy that's... I Lost more fights than he's won since LFA won. I'll reference the PFL to make mention of Steven Peterson for a comparison. This is the most Clarissa Shields versus whatever three and six fighter. Brittany Elkin. Brittany Elkin. My apologies. This is so similar to that fight, and it's not even funny. The UFC has Chase Hooper, a, a very underdeveloped potential future star, maybe. I guess that would be the best way that we can describe him right now. He's coming off a win. So we have to give him an opponent who's probably also coming off a win. Who is there in the UFC around 145 pounds? You can probably make that walk. Who's around his level right now? And it's Steven Peterson. And listen, he has two UFC wins, and that's really impressive. But even look at who those wins are over. Matt Bissett, who, you know, never really was able to flourish in the UFC. And Martin Bravo, who, yeah, you referenced his time on Tough Latin America, but... His UFC career was less than impressive. And Steven Peterson's kind of odd, because he just... He's not really a brawler because he has more technique than that, but sometimes he can just be brought into a brawl, and sometimes he will brawl, even though you know his best path to victory, best path to victory won't be goodness. So for Peterson, and you bring up the game plan, I don't really know what his game plan is well, going to be. Do you just kind of try and tear the tattoo apart? I, if that helps you defend takedowns, because really at the end of the day, that's what every Chase Super breakdown for me is going to come down to. Can Chase Super get his opponent to the ground or not? Because you reference his time training with the Thompsons. I don't know how much that's going to be able to help him in the year that he's been able to train with them. I'm sure it has, don't get me wrong, but I really think changing your game to that degree takes not just one, not two, not three, not four. It takes five, six, maybe even ten training camps until their knowledge really does start to wear off on you. And yes, beating Peter Barrett's nice, but that doesn't really prove to me that, wow, you belong in the UFC right now. Super so Chase Super, I guess this is another chance to get a W on his record. And for Steven Peterson, the same thing. But for me, this fight really doesn't do that much for either guy's career in the whole grand scheme of things well i mean when you look at steven peterson he had the interview that kind of went viral with mma island where he talked about boycotting the texas commission because he's lost really close decisions there and i mean it is true you do look at steven peterson's record and we talk about some of the losses the benito lopez on contender series obviously not in texas but if we go up from that brandon davis luis pena alex caceres bit of a pattern there and you look at his overall body of work he's got a win over steve garcia who ended up in the ufc he has two wins over ray rodriguez back to back ended up in the UFC a win over Irwin Rivera that ended up in the UFC so he does have experience against good fighters the trouble for me in this fight 
And it's got to be from the corner of Chase Super. Again, you beat Peter Barrett, who is now going back to the Cage Titans promotion that is owned by Calvin Cater that operates in New Hampshire. And listen, a news flash to MMA fans in the Northeast. NEF, Maine's penultimate MMA organization that Craig Allen covers. Big card coming up in August, not in Maine. It's also in New Hampshire. So interesting stuff there. But when I look at that, Chase Super, what happens? If he gets jabbed, it's like when Bozer fought Arlovsky. He almost like sells the jab. Like he pops his head back. And when he doesn't get the takedown, sometimes he'll just kind of accept it and try and pull guard or try and kind of pull people down to the mat. And it's not always the best look, especially if you're trying to score enough. From Peter Barrett to Steven Peterson, a little bit of a jump in competition. It's not the biggest, but it is a jump in competition. And for Steven Peterson, again, you know the level of competition that he's faced in the past. So without further referencing that, when we look at the odds, Peterson open a minus 180 favorite. He's a minus 117 right now. Chase Hooper open a plus 155 underdog. He's around a minus 106. So the odds are starting to close in on par. If we have a look at topology for the overall votes, 948 of them, 71% Hooper. 73% by submission, the 29% that have Peterson, 54% by decision, 38% by knockout. Should be noted, again, for Chase Hooper, the only loss was to Alex Caceres, but it was a super one-sided loss. And even in the fight in his debut against Daniel Tamor, he got cracked a couple times. Now, he did finish that fight, so credit where it's due, but uh, yeah, I'm interested to see this one because it's weird. It is a really weird fight. Personally, I still think Chase Super is going to win this fight. I know I've talked a lot about the things that Peterson can do to avoid Chase Super's takedowns, but listen, remember when the odds were really close when Sean O'Malley fought a Thomas Almeida? And knowing what we know now, that's kind of ridiculous. But at the time, it was like, okay, O'Malley is still some question marks we don't really know yet. I feel like this fight's very similar. The UFC wants Chase Super to win, and they know who they're putting them in there with. Steve Peterson, it's not like he's a scrub on the map by any means, but when Chase Super wins fights, it's because of how good his grappling is, and I think the UFC knows what they're doing with their matchmaking. I'm going to have to side with Chase Super in this fight, just because I don't think Steven Peterson is going to be able to do enough to win the fight, even if Chase Super can't get the takedown every single round. Yeah, I, I just think that Peterson's going to be able to outstrike him, and then once you start to frustrate a Chase Super, well, what does he do? It's it's going to be kind of that desperation mode, the long lunging takedowns, the the attempts at like an Imanari role, things like that. So for me, I'm going to go with the guy that trains with Miles Johns, Aaron Phillips, and the crew over there at Fortis MMA. I'm going with Ocho Peterson. You got the dream, Chase Hooper. Really looking forward to this card. We have the three fights, five rounders up at the top. Let's keep locked in with Fight Night Picks, as we always say. Let's get into it.